but infants. And I think the point you were trying to make was that you can love someone for something they give you, or you can love someone for who they are. Right. I was just using the example to illustrate spiritual development. Right, and right. At one point, we're, we love Allah because He's the source of every good we've ever had. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, as we're talking about, we're looking up at this third level. Mm -hmm. That's the level where you love Allah because of the essence, because of Allah's essence. Of who He is. Of who He is. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the knowledge of who He is, most importantly. The, the ma'rifah. The ma'rifah, right. This, this knowledge, this gnosis. I think it's a beautiful example. A lot of the righteous people from our tradition have used in various uh, situations the idea of an infant to kind of illustrate spiritual development. Yeah. One thing that uh, what you said reminded me of the prophetic uh, uh, tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam seeing those people worshipping as a story. Um, oh, the Prophet Jesus, Ali Salaam, Ali in that particular story? Yes, exactly. Okay. Is that uh, one of the saintly figures of our tradition, he's, he said one of the strangest things I've ever seen was an old man hanging by the Kaaba and asking Allah for dunya. Hmm. And a young man in the marketplace selling, buying and selling, and his tongue was always in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So I think what we're talking about, these levels are states. No, they're states that we can be in internally? Internally, it but doesn't externally matter where we, we are. can be doing what we're doing. Uh -huh. So I guess the message is not that we have to all of a sudden wear like coarse clothing and climb a mountain somewhere and just sit and, you know, exactly. meditate and fast for, forever. I think it's a state, it's a change of our heart. Is how it, where is our heart directed? Is it directed towards the, the world, this dunya, or is it directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. and His Messenger, etc. So this is a, an important um, uh, dictum that we have in the tradition is that we should, we're not supposed to judge anyone. Yes. Because we don't know anyone's state. Yes. Uh, outwardly you can see someone, he looks totally, you know, in dunya. And there's so many stories in our tradition, I mean, we don't have enough time. But he could be the richest person, driving the best car, having the best, etc., uh, etc. Et but his heart is so with Allah, much more than the person that's begging. Right. It's all about a state. It's, it's all state about the internal state. So we shouldn't judge one another because we don't know what our state is with Allah. We don't know what, you know, what the other person's state is with Allah. Well, that's Allah. one point. And another one is that, well, even if someone is in a bad state, assuming you could even judge them and you can't, you don't know how they're going to die. Exactly. How it's going to end. And I think the Sahaba, the companions and the righteous uh, the people in general were always aware of this throughout the, this tradition. I also think that it's a beautiful example you give about not judging because this show, Stairway to Paradise, one of the reasons uh, I decided to call it Stairway to Paradise was because the staircase is on its way up. I envisioned a very broad one that allows all of us on it at our varying speeds. Everybody takes their time as long as they're doing their best, obviously, because Allah knows what your best is. You're doing your best and you're slower than someone else. Allah's still content with you doing your best, although you're slower than others. In fact, like you said, you could even be faster in Allah's eyes. Because although you're physically moving slower, it is your best, and someone else is moving at half the speed they can move at, so actually you're closer to Allah than that person is, though outwardly it seems like that person is light years ahead of you. Mm. The example I want to give here is of two people. Make up any name. Jimmy and Bobby. Okay, Jimmy and Bobby, right? So I'm just going to say John and Jack, right? Because that's more... Uh, you have John, you have Jack. Now let's pretend that outwardly you walk up to John and Jack, and they're both smoking a cigarette. For example, and that's reprehensible in the faith that harms you. You know, people you shouldn't shouldn't smoke, but you know, people have taken their time to come out of it. And alhamdulillah, have ultimately the steps to getting close to Allah. Now, I'll tie this in with the name of the show in a minute. But if you walk up to them, and they're both smoking a cigarette, and you have this whole, yeah, you know, you're gonna burn, and you should, you're gonna go to hell, and you should stop, and that's wrong, and one of these attitudes that unfortunately send people away from religion, you're going to have to judge them based on their outward state, and you're gonna have to say that they're both horrible people who smoke cigarettes, which is again a little off the wall, but and on the other hand, if you have the internalization of the love of Allah inside you and the husn dhan, the good opinion of the servants of God, because you're supposed to have good opinion of everybody around you, as you beautifully pointed out, what if Jack was a, yesterday a drug addict and a cigarette smoker? And he's quit all the four other things and many of the other the evil things he does and he's still struggling with the cigarettes. He's like, Ya Allah, I've done tawbah, but t tomorrow I'll quit cigarettes. You know, I'll try, just, I can't get rid of this yet. You know, I'm thinking about all these. And on the other hand, John was the supposed preacher who talks to people about all these virtues, and then today he's smoking a cigarette. They're in a very different state right now, although outwardly they embody the same sin. And if you judge people, you're going to inevitably speak to both of them the same way, and you're going to send Jack away from the faith. 
Although Jack, the only thing a religious person should do with him, and he's become a religious person himself, because to be religious is to seek closeness to Allah. And Jack is seeking closeness to Allah by quitting all these sins. What you ultimately should do is realize that on the stairway to paradise, John has actually fallen about five steps, making up the arbitrary number, and Jack may have already leaped about 45. And they've met on that same stair step, on the stairway, so we don't know. And so this idea of judging people, we're supposed to have husn al dhan good opinion of people. That, that I think just people wondering, what does this have to do with the love of Allah? It has everything to do with it because maybe what sent people away from religion and from seeking this love and this closeness to Allah is people like this. It's people who have judged people. I think we can actually tie this back into the love of Allah. Mm -hmm. 